180,000 been placed. If you multiply by two, that is the volume of the engine which are coming up. Let's take the view from the speaker, the, the distinguished speakers and the industry veterans, those who have seen the industry growing for more than two, three decades, and they have seen how the industry has evolved in the Indian market. And let's take their viewpoint and understand for that. Starting from Anand, Anand, you give us an insight, like you have seen the industry coming and growing, the, how the alliance has come and grown together. The current numbers which is shown together, the huge volume of the orders of the place in the market. So how do you see this industry and uh, how you foresee the upcoming decade uh, belongs to the Indian MRO? Uh, Mangalam, first of all, thanks for having me here. Uh, and very good morning to all of you. Uh, yeah, being associated with this industry for the last 15 odd years, uh, we have uh, seen uh, ads in the in the number of aircraft, but we have also seen equal number of uh, deletions in the air. So we have not really seen a real bump up uh, the way we are seeing currently. While there are almost close to 100 plus aircraft which are on the ground because of uh, the engine issues, uh, therefore we don't see as many aircraft flying and catering to the to the traveling population. But the orders are real now, and uh, the additions are real. The expansion is real. So I firmly believe uh, the next uh, decade or so will be quite exciting uh, for the country. So uh, and there will be a substantial growth. And we are already seeing that happening with almost uh, aircraft per week from, from AIX, from Air India, from Indigo. So, and even Akasha adding uh, number of aircrafts. So a lot, uh, lot of additions happening and consequently very soon the MRO activities will also uh, go up uh, uh, tremendously. Not just the basic uh, airframe maintenance but I am also seeing uh, the related uh, MRO activities like cabin, uh, the livery changes, the rebranding exercise that is being done. So the activity levels are, have been fairly exciting, yes. Perfect. Thank you so much for that, Anand. Like, taking the lead from there, but if I can have a question for like in terms of, so it shows that yes, we have orders in place, the volume is in place, intention is well set. How do you see we are positioned today in terms of the MRO when we talk especially? So as the current capabilities, do you work? So with the current capability to this, what we have already existing in the Indian MRO system, plus the expectation, because the numbers which are out is like every week probably India is adding one aircraft with that volume is received altogether. Every year we have got 100 to 100 hours aircraft getting added to them. So how do you see that our capability today is and we are ready for the future week? Uh, good morning all. I hope I'm audible at the back. Yes? Excellent. Thank you for being here. Um, when I see the audience, I start to wonder whether this is the size of the MRO industry in India, which is kind of representative uh, given the fact that we still are at less than 10% of the capability of, no, the requirement of this country. Uh, it's something that has been an archaic problem. We have struggled with uh, certain regulations. Mercifully, we're expecting them to be shifted out this year. And given a lot of insight from the government that they will. Uh, India has also never recognized MRO as an industry, as you know. We were always clubbed with something called ground handling. I think that is coming out now. The sheer volumes that make us successful is the only reason that the four, three of us are here. Uh, I don't see this changing anytime soon. I think momentum will still continue to drive us forward. What we will need to do at some point as a nation is do a massive faith in its putting money down for technology. Uh, and I don't think there's shortage of funds either. If you assume that the entire MRO business case, I uh, remember getting this data. As on March 24, which is end of a financial year, the total MRO import bill has hit over $2 billion. Now, if you think about it, it's an enormous number, $2 billion. And the usual economist or accountant will say, if you catch 10% of that, you're a $200 million company. 
into a valuation exercise or a billion dollar company. So sitting here, I've just made all of you unicorns, you know, like this. Absolutely. Having said that, we still have uh, a way to go. I uh, want to welcome Mr. Vijay Kumar here. Um, he has come from Ministry of Commerce specifically to listen to the concerns of the MRO. And uh, what we are saying to him is because he's negotiating on part of our behalf of our government with the EU. Uh, and there's a lot of global trade happening. So what we are, message I'm giving out is while the opportunity is massive and finite, well, almost infinite for most, we still need to make it fit. Last, uh, yesterday, uh, for those who heard Ambar Dubey, Ambar Dubey was Joint Secretary at Ministry of Civil Aviation. He now works with McKinsey. He was with KPMG. He's a personal friend. He said something very uh, interesting. He said, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And we have a habit of taking it to 94, 95 degrees and said, okay, now it's boiling. Fact is, no, it won't boil. You have to take it to 100. So we have only one message as far as we go, with, as far as the government goes. Please take us to that, that level. Give us the flexibility. We're not asking for money. We're not asking for concessions. We're only asking for a level playing field globally. Uh, I'd like to see five times this hall full with not just older MRO companies, but newer entrants to build on, on the India success story. Because to answer the second part of your thing, yes, we're inducting 100 plus planes a year. And I think we'll keep doing that till the next few years. There is no doubt in my mind, this will be a 1,000 plus plane uh, economy in just the civil sector. Business aviation will automatically take off. Our military has supposedly, which we don't know, in excess of 2,000 plus plus aircraft. It's already a massive uh, aircraft economy. We will be the world's largest uh, after perhaps US and China. Chances are we might overtake China. I don't know. But top two, three, absolutely, if you're not there already. We need to uh, hold hands together as an industry. We need our government to recognize that we are part of them. We're not in opposition to them. And everything that they do brings jobs home, brings money home, and is able to build sustainability of aircraft home. Very true. So after we had, you actually mentioned about the way it has evolved in adding to that, like in the current capacity, being the advisory panel for multiple government policy which are evolving. So I'm sure things are happening and then lots more to be done on the sector. Taking the clue from there, Abhishek, uh, you had you come from the MRO setup, one of the leading players in the segment. So, how do you see this as a potential? Like today, today you can see and understand. But two approach to it. As an operator, we have to focus on the operations part of it. And then the two ways: either to move ahead and take the opportunity, jihad is ahead with us, to grab with the foreign partners, the middle east players, and try to completely outsource the activity of the maintenance to them, and then work it out. While the potential is high, you are already available here. How do you see this as an opportunity for you to scale up your current uh, possibilities, current capabilities, current capacity, and the volume which you can take it up? And uh, what is your strategy on that? Thank you, Roland, and thank you to uh, the organizers for having all of us here. And uh, I see, you know, two veterans have already taken things back on, and you know, I, I think, uh, you know, slightly different uh, handle, and just a little. I, I prove you that there is enough potential. What we are talking right now is actually what we are talking only for India, the fleet which is going to operate in India. Whereas, where India is exporting so much of things from India, why not the MRO services? Why in MRO we are still net importer? So 90 percent of things are going outside. Whereas, the technicians, the engineers, the managers, everybody, wherever you go, you will find India. So India is very well positioned. We are country of youth, talented youth. Lot of you know the number of engineers we produce in India, number of engineers we produce in India is highest. But it is we are actually including amount of services. So why not we look at from this angle that we should support this industry in such a way that everybody together that this becomes actually an exporter. There is potential, there is enough potential that instead of buying this, we should be actually selling. There is there, you know, now uh, 
Myanmar uh, has started its own school of education, whereby they will be producing uh, AMEs and they will be doing a lot of uh, type uh, certification courses. Uh, we will be adding on all these in uh, years to come to generate also readily available talent to take up this job immediately. So now you have to do a lot of training and then people are ready, but then we are creating a school which will create those kind of uh, candidate immediately employable in the industry. But apart from that also there is plenty of things available, not only the fleet. If you look at the fleet size, there is very little domestic fleet for Singapore, but Singapore is a much bigger amount of than India. Why is that? Why not India? So we have to partner on those questions. There is enough potential. Why only for India? Why producing only for India? Why not for the world? Yes, we are doing for other things. Okay. So, great, Abhishek, uh, like you mentioned about the training school which is coming up. In terms of the capabilities, we are well equipped for taking care of the major same activities. How do you see yourself strategically planning in terms of the... As, as the domestic fleet is increasing and also the fleet in the region is increasing, we are also expanding our uh, capabilities in terms of uh, area of uh, among the components side that we are focusing on larger components where you know, the logistics and other things are very complicated and the repair itself. So first step, we are expanding in this area and gradually we will definitely expand. We are talking to many OEMs and other MROs to kind of, you know, joint ventures and uh, using all the strength available in India to expand in uh, component MRO as well. But then we are not viewing only the Indian fleet. As GMR our technique, we are viewing the larger reason per se. Today also, you know, like when I do business, my business is coming more from export than import. And that is, okay, I have a position of advantage, but then we are utilizing it to the best as well. Thank you so much for that. You are coming to you. Like, so you heard about uh, the potential which India has got, the volume is coming up. So how do you see that the Indian players are trying to scale up? They are studying towards putting up the MRS expansion of that. Do you see it as a risk or opportunity? First of all, thanks for the opportunity to be here. Uh, and I think what we've all been talking about definitely, there's a huge potential. Yeah? When you look at the numbers, over 1,500 aircraft on orders, uh, I think what Bharat was saying, I think I, I read somewhere as well in the next uh, few years, India will be, I think, in the top three with aircraft movements, uh, you know, surpassing I mean, many, many other countries. Um, I think there's uh, enough opportunities, but of course this growth is extremely fast. Uh, you're talking about a tremendous growth over in a very short space of time. Yeah. Uh, so definitely there's enough opportunities for a lot to come in for the people, uh, the players locally as well. Uh, and of course with that there's of course all the challenges. You know, people. I think there's enough talent here. There's great engineers, technicians, they go out uh, in the aviation industry all over the world. So I see talent is there, but how do you create that infrastructure to support that growth? And it's not a normal growth, it's, it's, it's really a massive growth and a very fast growth. So it, it requires a lot of things. I mean, we were talking earlier, legislation, uh, you know, how do you get the talents? I mean, we went, visited GMR a few weeks ago, uh, and they, they're building an amazing uh, training center. And even that, I think, is still not enough. I mean, there's still a lot more that needs to be done. So, uh, how do you do that? Yeah, I think definitely it needs to be the government, the industry, the uh, educational services coming together and making this work. Because uh, aviation at the end is a huge part of the economy in any country. Yeah? It makes a huge um, uh, contribution to the GDP. So I think it's not just a national interest, it's also uh, a great opportunity for all ancillary businesses which feed into that. Uh, so I think it's exciting. We're just saying we're at, we are at the beginning of the uh, beginning of the curve. Yes. And uh, it's, it's really an exciting time. But of course, uh, uh, a lot of things to think about, a lot of things to uh, figure out how to do it for us uh, as an international MRO. I mean, we've been in India for many years. We have in Bangalore uh, a setup, but of course, it's not really that MRO setup that we would in British. And the question for us is, how do we do this? How do we come in and uh, you know uh, take you know be part of that growth? Yeah. And then the question is, okay. 
collaboration, who do you partner with, what are the rules, what are the regulations, and this is what we're actively looking at at the moment and, and then pretty much talking to everybody uh, and trying to see where that opportunity is and how to make that. But uh, I think positively, everybody's quite excited about this. Okay. So just coming, taking a leap from that again. So, uh, yes, there is a potential to the world globe, except this fact. So while you come from Afghanistan, you had this vertical leader. So what is your vision towards this bringing a business to India? So do you, are you looking today to do for a partnership? Can we expect something like uh, yeah. a joint venture with Max, a GMR, where you try to put up your setup here, see the volume. So considering uh, operator gets more confidence when you have something visible and a very close vicinity, one hour, two hours, where we can quickly get a turnaround on that. So how do you see that uh, potential and opportunities for that engagement? Yeah, I, I think like we said, we're at the beginning of now this curve. We've already have a collaboration with GMR since a short time, and we're trying to look at what makes sense. And I think that's the most important thing because at the end we're businesses. We're all businesses, yeah. And even at uh, our locations, where high cost, we do send work out to maybe other locations outside of Europe uh, where you get things done more efficiently. So at the end, the question is, what makes sense? Yeah, and I think uh, at the end, our customers are the airlines. Yeah? Those are our partners. So we need to add value to them. So the question is always, what do we do? And it's not just for the sake of doing it. Yeah, okay. and, and there's enough. There's components, there's engines, there's landing gears, there's base maintenance, and then over various types of aircraft. So it's really figuring out what makes sense uh, and how to do it. And, uh, this is, I think, where we are, and I think the and first steps is definitely... You're right, saying that it has to be a win-win situation for both the parties. Yeah. Taking it from there, like, basically, Mr. Alan is going to add to that. Like, we understand there's a potential. There's an intention to engage, the intention to invest back. But how do you think the government policy, the infrastructure today, is something which is ready to promote, or is a bottleneck or a showstopper for this country? Right. Uh, <clears throat> you know, when we interact with uh, policy makers, uh, one number which is often uh, uh, often projected is uh, Indian MRO industry going up to 4 billion in next uh, 5 to 8 to 10 years. Uh, but that's uh, not the ultimate, that's not the number that we should be focusing on. I agree with Abhishek uh, that we should look at India, not just for India, but India as a global uh, or at least regional player. Uh, just as a data point, 67% uh, of the total aircrafts in next 10 years will be added in this region from Turkey to Philippines, something which India as an MRO can address. Just the redeliveries for next 10 years will be upwards of $35 billion. So, uh, so we, our policy framework should not be just uh, focusing on $4 billion or taking from 1 billion to 4 billion, but focusing on that 35 billion or upwards and making the country ready to take care of the region. Again, uh, we are already playing a lead role in terms of being the talent supplier to the world. Uh, whether you go to any, in this entire belt, uh, you would find Indians working okay. there. And uh, now the talent is also being exported to Europe given the shortage of uh, shortage of young uh, technical manpower across the globe so on the talent we are already playing playing the leaders role uh, on the mro side also on the services side also it is high time that we we capture that leaders role uh, for this region and uh, the policy makers are today uh, seized of uh, this opportunity they understand the opportunity and uh, I hope to see many changes coming in, very positive changes coming in in the next uh, six to eight months, uh, driving us towards this leadership position. So, like, we should fix to you, like, probably, how do you see that? Like, it's India should image themselves as the human resource producer, just the operator to create one of the volume for the entire world to take the opportunity from there? Or you see that in house capabilities, policies are all set to absorb the resources, absorb the enough capabilities and then take a benefit out of it. I would say like why do we do the resources more? Like we have the talent, we have enough everything available. So why not, you know, like okay, if somebody is interested because if they have to run their small setup in their country, we can definitely export the human uh, resources. But then that you 
human resources will create much happier environment here to work on those objects because these uh, what components and things we are talking about, these are always moving around from one shop to another shop. No shop is 100% self-sufficient or self-reliant. Some part of job they are always outsourcing to some other party. So nobody knows. <coughs> if you talk the biggest of the big ones, they are also outsourcing. So nothing will work without outsourcing because you can only create a capability which will take care up to some extent and beyond that you have to outsource. So very well, India is capable to create everything here, not only the human resource, the final part. So there is where I think we are already, we have started focusing on that. And that is why I think India should run itself like at least the regional place where, as uh, Bhaskar said, from the key to so again, especially I think, I think more specific to the skill part, basically. So today, if you see the numbers, hardly the people left around. So as you know, that India is growing equally, even the Middle East is growing. A lot of new airlines, new players are coming to the country. So there are two ways which is coming up, like all the people, today, if you talk about specific, the triple seven qualified engineers in the market, hardly there were a few players which are operating it. We talk about a specific or 787. We talk about 320, we have a good number of the players available in the big in segment. But when we talk about the specific and majority of the people are moving toward the middle is gone. And now that if you see by the numbers today, we have got 200, 300 technically qualified people available in the market, while the forecast shows like probably in the next three to five, seven years, we will be needing more than 50 to 70 thousand people. Do you think that the current capabilities, the infrastructure today is capable to fill the gap? Or we should be again pushing back our own people who are moving to middle is? India is very, very positively placed to immediately support that. We have qualified engineers, they just need to be trained and they can be put down. We saw this possible. Perfect. So that gives a confidence to We are actually even you know, putting up. Sure. And then, whatever is not available can be created in the middle part. That's, that's not a big challenge here. So, Jay, with this, I think you can stay. Yes, you know, like, it's not like India is going to pull everything in India. But the entire region can grow simultaneously. It's not like you know, we will be you know, kind of uh, eating into the money program. It is all growing jointly. Perfect, perfect. So, after that, Jayad, you can stay sure that the team working in India, developing more and more people, will be taking care of the requirement coming your way as well, and the expansion plan which will come up this way. Especially when we talk in terms of the specific technical, the, the task of technology in terms of the component. The repair house for that. We are building good expansion plans in India as well. So, how do you see that potential in the market, especially in terms of component and engine segment? When we talk specifically, and what is the lag you see as an outsider in the Indian market? What is actually missing out here, and what should have been done to improve on this? Yeah, I think uh, today the base maintenance is, is, is fairly established. Yeah. Capacity-wise, is the difference question, but uh, the base maintenance is there. Uh, the other three pillars are, of course, components, landing gears, engines, yeah. Uh, then it, the question is, what, what makes sense, right? On the components, there are thousands of components. There's definitely components which you should do here because of logistical reasons. They have, uh, you know, they're larger, bulkier, take time to move out. Uh, and then there are parts which does it really make sense to do it here? Can you pull them together and send them to uh, other locations? So uh, d definitely the larger items which are, you know, have larger uh, turnarounds, you know, logistics they are difficult to get out. Uh, those really make sense yeah, to have a look. How can you build up that capability? I, I don't think it's... it's, it's uh, a challenge to build up the capability in itself. Yeah, I think here we have enough technology, enough uh, capabilities, enough the right people to do that. Uh, it's really just a challenge, let's say, as a uh, business. If I invest this amount of money into this capability, is there a return, right? Or are there other uh, players? And, and so it's it's really an, an economic. I mean, of course, we talked about uh, the, the legislation and all of those that also come with it. Yeah, I don't think people is an issue. Yeah, it, it, this is not a challenge. Pass the same question to you, uh, one of, like probably you are known to be Max Airspace, you are known to be one of the leading technically advanced tech component 
service and provider. How do you see this as a, what is the today's capability versus future opportunity, challenges? Okay, Pandeji, here's a different view. I think we are sh running short of quality manpower already. I'm willing to admit it as a Indian and Max and even as president of the association. <laughs> there is definitely a certain amount of drain we face. I'm fairly confident that Anand and Abhishek will back me up. We still tend to get people who come to us, especially if we've been through the EAS FA. Sir, XYZ in Middle East is offering two X and three X. We two are going to the same challenge. Okay, it's a cost to the company to bring the person to that level. It's also a timeline. See, you can't take somebody and make him a signing authority in three days. Take six months, two years, Absolutely. training, whatever, and then the person disappears. We can only, I think, surmount it by having scale. If you're large enough, then you can afford the loss. I don't think that the leak is going to stop anytime soon. There is a huge amount of ambition in the Middle East for them to also do exactly what we're doing. Admittedly, a lot of that is being focused upon by using expat manpower. And we are one of the largest suppliers of that expat manpower. But um, it will continue. They are extremely rich countries. They have fantastic tax laws. And they still continue to be the hydrocarbon provider to the world. And that makes for a very solid business case on whether they want to pay an X or a 2X or 3X to the people. What Abhishek is doing is more than admirable. But I think we're going to have to do a lot more. And I think we're going to need to improve the quality of our education of our agents, which I believe lacks. Um, it's a long debate about work they can do. But the reality is, I think, if you give me the number of 50,000 over the next five years technicians, guys, I don't think we've got that many coming up from all the schools combined, even in five years combined. I mean, the government limitation of not more than 30 but 10,000 will be the limit, you know. So, what, minus 40,000? And make no mistake, this will stall your growth. And I don't think the Middle East has 30,000 people of ours lying there for us to pick back. So, for those who are looking to invest, my view is the biggest sunrise sector is going to be education of AMEs and what. Do not underestimate this by any stretch of imagination. It's like the pilot shortages today. You know, we had a period when one of your Air India pilot agitation, I mean, it was a, which it was because there's a shortage. Otherwise, who's going to agitate? It is. <laughs> so, <laughs> So I think the technici technician shortage is going to be even more hypercritical. Like the pilot, he has to go through the process, has to be uh, approved, has to write his papers, his car, blah, blah, blah. And um, any uh, colleges or universities here, please grab this. Not that we can't do it. I think we are too focused in doing other things. If I had an extra couple of crores lying around, I'd put up a college for technician to you. Again, I took to it. So just the current ecosystem, the current training module which you have got, just giving a three years of qualification then out to the market. Don't you see a need that where the training institutes, like Atmea, and the industry has to come together, Absolutely. collaborate. Absolutely. That's what I said. If you had a change. Time. So um, in my experience of having worked in, uh, briefly in my younger days in the US, education and industry was very integrated. Uh, most of our research, uh, we as Max, we do a lot of defense work and we are integrated with Bombay IIT I and mean, we get fantastic work from them. But the level of integration is still way below global standards. And part of that is I think our educational system for the AMEs requires much more to be achieved in bringing together a more efficient handover takeover. So when the guy comes out from college, and again, my friends are here, we have to retrain them from zero. Okay. Zero. I don't blame the kids because, mind you, when they come and they work six, eight months after we've done an absolute shampooing of their brains, they're fantastic. But I'm really worried that we have to shampoo their brains so much because they come with such philosophy and uh, knowledge that you start wondering, really, you're an Amy. 
it's, it, it gives us the scale. So yeah, I think we need, we need a relook at education. Uh, there's no doubt that we produce very good people. Uh, and which is why these people end up at you know, Zayed's offices and all, whether it's Bangalore or um, in Qatar or Emirates. And they, they do an exemplary job. When they come to us, they do an exemplary job with all these. That's why all these companies have global approaches. But education is is the bigger market than aircraft and a Absolutely. Absolutely. Like Abhishek, back to you again. Like, 